afternoon west in the world. It's Thursday, March the 5th, and in after what has been a very busy two weeks, I'm afraid that our review video series has been somewhat neglected. Uh, so, uh, with spring break upon us, I have a little bit of breathing room and think, uh, thought I would try to uh, put together this review piece uh, to help us sort of think about, in the broadest sense, uh, what we've been discussing uh, since uh, our last exam. We've had four lectures in that time, uh, one on the transformation of the Ancien Regime, the old regime, uh, two that were chiefly about the Industrial Revolution, and then uh, really climaxing today uh, with our discussion of, of Mendoza the Jew. Uh, and really, all of those categories, um, all of those discussions, could be described under the umbrella of this transformation of the old regime. As I said last Tuesday, uh, the events that take place at the end of the 18th century uh, through the beginning of the 19th century is a period that most historians look to and say, yes, this is where the shape of the modern world is, is really defined. And that happens in the context of two big changes. The French Revolution, or more broadly, the era of Atlantic revolutions, if we fold in the American, Haitian, and other Latin American revolutions, and the Industrial Revolution. Uh, and what we have tried to describe are these sorts of uh, broad, sweeping movements, many of which we can see embodied in the life of Daniel Mendoza. So what's at the heart of these changes? What are the big ideas that we, we need to be uh, understanding? Well, in terms of politics and political thinking, I've tried to frame this as a movement uh, from subject to citizen, uh, from a view of the, uh, of the nation or the state as being under the sovereignty of a king who had been appointed by God and given the right to rule over subjects, to a, the, a view of the state as belonging to the nation, that is, to the entire body of its citizens, who in some way participate in the making of its government, in the creation of, of the, the, the hierarchy of officials who oversee them, who have some kind of voice. Now, now the form of this varies tremendously, right? There's... Uh, the American model that perhaps is most familiar to us is just one expression of this that emerges out of the American War for Independence and the debates over the Constitution. That's maybe the easiest or clearest example, but even things that are happening in places like England, uh, where the monarchy remains firmly in place, uh, point in that same kind of direction. This, in turn, gives birth to a spirit that we describe today as nationalism. And as I said, this is going to be sort of the key concept that will carry much of the weight of the coming days. Uh, in Berger, he, said, he describes nationalism as one of two great ideologies that sort of struggle to provide an appropriate sense of community and belonging uh, throughout the 19th and into the early 20th century. And I find that to be a, a fairly persuasive perspective. The other uh, great change is the one that's brought about by industrialization. A and this is the one that has more to do with the shaping of the sort of economic and political, or excuse me, social life of the Western, or what we might today call developed world uh, as we know it. What kinds of changes does this involve? Well, amongst them, of course, the movement out of rural agrarian life into urban life and uh, factory or wage work, but also especially the growth of professional services. Uh, we haven't maybe made a big enough deal out of this, but the birth of that middle class is going to be one of the great legacies of the Industrial Revolution. And they're the ones who are not just buying tickets to leisure events and spending money gambling on boxing matches, as in the case of Mendoza, but who are the, mo the best educated, the most progressive in their vision of, of how people should participate in the state, and the ones who are going to be calling uh, for the greatest changes. We'll talk about that as 
uh, liberalism uh, in particular uh, as we're moving forward from here. Uh, industrialization uh, really does help sort of set the stage for the ascent of this class of, of people. It does so, as we said, at, at sort of tremendous cost. Uh, for many working class people, this process of, of an emerging industrial world is a very, very difficult one. Uh, we'll continue to see how some of those tensions play out, what other ideas about how the world should be shaped uh, uh, should uh, look like or, or how they enter into play. Uh, and more than anything, we're going to start uh, delving in the coming weeks into uh, the, the troubles, yeah, the troubles, I guess, that emerge out of this, uh, this tension uh, in this newly transformed society. How is it going to treat its members? How is it going to relate to the world at large? Uh, and these are important questions for us uh, as we go. Uh, that may be more questions uh, than it is helpful review points, but these are big concepts that we're wrestling with. Hopefully they'll become increasingly uh, solid in your minds as we move forward. Hope you enjoy your spring break. See you in a couple of weeks.